Hi everyone, welcome to THT and today we're taking a look at more spoilers of Shadows of the Galaxy. So before we start, I just wanted to mention that I've opened my coaching program. Uh, so uh, if you guys want to book, uh, I will add the schedule to, uh, as well as the rules on how that works out in the description below. Uh, without further ado, let's go into our first spoiler of the day. It is Hillobon Enforcer. So this is basically a, a bike pursuer, but that costs one less, but has a bounty to draw a card. Uh, I think Starbike Pursuer is not super good, except in Grand Admiral, uh, the, in uh, Grand Inquisitor. I think this card is very good in Grand Inquisitor, and I think basically a more reliable way to get this turn one play can be pretty powerful. The fact that the fact that it costs one is not super relevant. I feel like. Uh, but maybe I could be wrong. So overall the card is not great and I think I would prefer to pay an extra one and not have it uh, my opponent draw a card when he dies. However, uh, it's still a decent card in, in, in Grand Inquisitor so this is why I rated it a 4 out of 10 uh, because I think this card has potential in the Grand Inquisitor blue even though we don't know if Grand Inquisitor is going to be better in, in the blue colors in the, in the upcoming set. Maybe it's going to be mono red. Uh, it's hard to tell for now. Because the the, 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 the the leader is really getting so many strong cards, it's it's hard to tell how it's going to end up after everything is uh, after the dust uh, settles. Uh, next, we got Freetown Backup. Um, in my opinion, a relatively weak uh, unit because it requires another unit to be in play uh, to really has to really have value. Uh, so very difficult to use, and the smuggle cost is very expensive. Uh, so uh, and very unlikely to be relevant. So to me, I'm not very excited about this card. I rated it a t two out of ten. I don't think it's uh, it's going to be a, a strong card. Next we got we got Chris uh, Chris Santan. I have no idea how to pronounce that. Anyway, uh, this card is the Grand Inquisitor Wet Dream. It's tons of HP, three attack, uh, deal uh, damage to enemy units for the amount of damage that he has. Uh, the fact, uh, I think the card, even if you don't play any bounty cards, I feel like the card is very playable by itself. Just having a unit that comes into play, then you can use Grand Inquisitor, untap it, and then attack, deal two damage to something, and then uh, it's it's on the same power level. I think it's stronger than than Seven Sister because it has more HP and it grows more and more uh, threatening as it has more damage on it. So I think it's pretty good in Grand Inquisitor. Is it going to be uh, uh, good? Um, so yeah, I think it's going to be a, an auto include in 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 a Grand Inquisitor deck. It doesn't have the fourth trait compared to Seven Sisters, so we'll see how that goes. It has an additional bonus if it has bounty. So if you there is an enemy unit with bounty, uh, it's going to come into play, ready, then attack then get ready again and basically deal 6 damage out of, the, out of the park and completely wipe the opponent board and deal a bunch of damage to the base. I think it's it's a very solid card in Grand Inquisitor. And, but I think uh, it becomes stronger if you have bounty, but I don't think it needs bounty to be good. So I rate this card a 7 out of 10. Because obviously it still remains a card that is very specialized for a specific leader. I don't think this card will be good outside of Grand Inquisitor. Uh, or maybe it will be good in some sort of bounty hunter uh, deck, but this is kind of like my first impression. And obviously the damage only deals to the ground units, which is definitely a significant weakness of the card. Uh, next we got Guild Target. Uh, and uh, this card is uh, not super amazing uh, on its own, but I think it's going to be a necessary enabler for the bounty deck. I think zero cost bounty cards are going to be very important for the bounty deck to function properly. Uh, 3 damage to the base is nothing to sneeze at, but it's not... Uh, the fact that it's fairly conditional means that I don't think this card is going to be uh, necessarily for an aggro deck. I think it's going to be for either a bounty aggro deck or for a bounty deck in general. But I think it's going to be a very important card for this deck just because of being a zero cost uh, bounty card is going to be important. So for me, I read this is a 7 out of 10. Uh, just to mention, I always uh, like to say it, but those are my first impression. I've obviously never played with any of those cards. So obviously take everything I say with a pinch of salt and obviously we don't know the full card pool, we still only see a fraction of the card pool, so obviously my evaluation is likely to be very off. So just always take this into account. I just had um, 
a rating uh, out of 10 just to make the, the, the full exercise a bit more exciting, but don't take that rating seriously uh, by any means. Just take this as my first impression as I read the cards uh, and, uh, and kind of going from my experience. Uh, next we got Molded Co Art, uh, which I think is very solid. Um, um, I think um, Escort Skiff has been considered a card that was very playable in constructed Star Wars Unlimited, but has always been held back by the fact that it's relatively difficult to consistently have a green unit on the on the field as the card comes out. And I think that Molded Co Art is basically Escort Skiff that is unconditional, that is always going to have Ambush far more reliable. The fact that he has only two attack on defense, I don't think it's a big deal for an ambush card. Uh, so I think I would say this card is really better than it's called Skiff, even though Skiff has the advantage of being a vehicle and being mono green. Uh, so, the, but I think this card is really good at at, at what it does, uh, and it's gonna be it's gonna see a lot of play in my opinion. And another thing that make me rate this card a little bit uh, more than maybe some other people would is the fact that it works very well with the new Boba Fett, uh, the Boba Fett Damio. Basically, this card is going to have 5 attack when it comes into play, which makes it basically a Syndicate Lackeys for 4 instead of 5, which is pretty incredible. And you don't need any other uh, synergy, you just jam this card in uh, in, a, in a Boba deck and a Boba Damio deck, and it's, it's going to be uh, basically just a Syndicate Lackeys for 4, which is pretty great. Uh, next we got Dr. Pershing. So one of the things that uh, control decks have been struggling with a little bit is a, an ability that allows them to draw cards reliably. So they have been playing cards like I am your father in order to gain card advantage and stuff like this, which is something that control decks don't desperately need, but they really like it. And that's why you see I am your father sing play in those control lists. But more and more, uh, but, uh, um, sorry, uh, I am your father is a little bit unreliable. And the fact that you have to play this card at the moment when you need to deal with a threat for this to get guaranteed the, the, the three card draw is kind of a, a very annoying for the deck. So I'm sure that uh, control players have been kind of thinking about uh, more reliable ways to draw cards. And uh, so for example, uh, me personally, I've been playing uh, uh, Mining Guild TIE Fighter uh, in my uh, yellow control decks as it is a more reliable way to draw cards. Than I am your father, but Doctor Pershing uh, is really good uh, because it, you play this early on. It's going to help you play around Power of the Dark Side in the Mirror of Control if you want to protect the threat. But more importantly, it's going to draw you cards for free after you made that initial investment. Uh, obviously, obviously, it can be killed, but it has five health, so it's relatively tough to kill. And by the time it dies, it's likely haven't drawn you a couple of cards or absorb a bunch of damage from the opponent. So I think the card is very good uh, in a control deck, uh, just using it on itself in order to draw cards. And uh, so basically, so um, yeah, so um, some people have probably thought about this card in some sort of Grand Inquisitor deck, self damage deck when you damage your own units to get grid and bonuses and stuff. But honestly, I don't think that's going to be the main purpose of this card. The 0-5 stat line really prevents it from being in any deck that wants to be just a little bit aggressive. I just think it's going to be a, a draw engine for control decks. So for me, I rated this a 7 out of 10. Uh, next we got Django Fett. So Django Fett is interesting. Uh, so I was talking about earlier that uh, the uh, the Grand Inquisitor deck might want to uh, basically go away from playing force unit into the force synergies and focus more on the bounty synergies. And in my opinion, the main reason for that is Django Fett. Django Fett is just perfect for Grand Inquisitor once again. The three six stat lines that boost in attack when it attacks, it's just perfect. It gets overwhelmed if it attacking the bounty unit and draws your card in the process. Just a very good card for only four resources. The stat line is very good uh, for four resources, uh, just a, a generally speaking. Uh, even without the ability, just a three six for four that draws your card when it defeats unit is not bad at all. Um, but yeah, I think it's going to be uh, better in Grand Inquisitor. Will Grand Inquisitor, the card really becomes a lot, as opposed to the Wookiee, which I think can work well without Bounty. I think Django Fett really wants Bounty to get to its full potential, and if it does, the card is going to be very strong. So I rated this card at 8 out of 10. It cannot, I cannot rate this card higher than 8 out of 10 because it does 
uh, really want some synergies to really work well. Uh, but it's nice to see some good four drops in these archetypes uh, being included. And once again, the Bounty Hunter, obviously this card is also gonna probably going to see a lot of play in the Bounty Hunter decks, not only in the Grand Acquisitor deck. Uh, next we got the Village Protectors, uh, which is basically a 2-2 Sentinel Shield for 3. Um, this card does not sound great on paper, but then if you compare it to uh, the uh, Cloud City Guard, it's actually not bad at all. In many cases, Shield is straight up better than uh, Elf Bonus. Uh, and uh, yeah, so it really depends on, on the case. It really depends on the meta. But I think there's a fair few cases where this card might be better than Cloud City Guard. And uh, I think in that, in that context, the card can be playable. Uh, but I think it's very unlikely that it's going to see a lot of play. But uh, who knows? So I rate this card a 5 out of 10. Then we got Crimin Criminal Muscle. So this card is uh, basically an anti-upgrade uh, unit. Uh, but in my opinion, if I really want to deal with an upgrade for one resources, I would rather play um, Confiscate, uh, which will deal with an upgrade uh, forever and targets any upgrades, not only the non-unique ones. So this one... It gives you a 2-1 body, which is nice. Um, I don't think it's unplayable because there are a few decks that really want to have you in it. For example, this card is very good in a U-Wing deck because it gives you kind of a card in, in your U-Wing toolbox that can, be in, that can be very cheap and that allows you to deal with an upgrade. So if you're in a meta where there's a lot of non-unique upgrades, this can be very strong. But uh, it's going to be super niche. So I read this as a 3 out of 10. Uh, it's playable, it's it's going to be very niche, so maybe I should rate this a 4 out of 10 for to, for being niche. Uh, but I think as a 3 out of 10, it's uh, it's very decent. Uh, next we've got Frontier Trader. Um, so this is basically a 2-2 two, two for 3 that draws your card when it comes into play, but instead of drawing from the top of the deck, you're drawing from your, from your uh, resource, and then you get to replace that resource. Um, Note, note, uh, note that the card that comes out uh, to replay that resource is going to come into play exhausted. So uh, you can't really generate resources with that card. Um, in any case, this card I think is not very good. Uh, basically, uh, we already have like a 1-1 one, one for 2 that draws you a card that doesn't really see any play. Uh, While well, this card is a 2-2 two, two for 3 which is a lot worse. And yes, it's slightly better than drawing a card, but not enough to make this card any playable. I think it's a 1 out of 10. I don't think this card is going to see any competitive play. Uh, next, we've got Grief Karga, which is another of those kind of Momothma kind of effect that comes into play, look at the top 5 and get a card. This one is very restricted to an upgrade, so you really need to be playing a lot of upgrades to make that card reliable. Uh, not only that, the 2-2 start line is not great. I don't think this card is particularly good. I think if I want to grab a card that is a lot more reliable, that's going to give you, uh, that's going to dig much deeper uh, for the same price, and that give, gives me two cards. I would pr rather play the the Mandalorian event. I forgot the name, uh, the one that costs two that can search top eight any upgrades on Mandalorian. I would rather play this than than that card. So I rate this a two out of ten. Yes, you get the, it gives you a two two body, but two two bodies are not very relevant in this game. So. Yeah, as a two three, I would have I would have liked it as a two two. Uh, I don't think I don't think I like it. Next we got we got uh, a very blurry photo of Lando Calrissian. I'm sorry about that. Uh, so um, I'm not, so something I've said before and I say it again, but basically trading tempo for card advantage is not super worth it in this game because as I said, you join two cards per turn, uh, so you unlikely to run out of gas the same way you would in a game like Magic the Gathering. So trading resources in order to draw more cards is very rarely worth it. And this is exactly what Lando does, because what he does is like it makes your smuggle cheaper, but then when you play the smuggle, you have to defeat a resource forever. Uh, so basically it gives you card advantage in a way, because it allows you to play your smuggle cards for a normal price. So that's basically like you were drawing your smuggle cards in your hand, sort of. Uh, and then, but then on this flip side, it makes you defeat your resource forever. So um, for me, this is not a particularly exciting uh, thing to do, 
unless you are playing in an aggro deck and you kind of like do not want a resource anymore and you kind of like capped out on how many resources you want and then you just want to defeat your resource and play the smuggle cards then I can see this card being quite good uh, but then there's two conditions first of all you need to be playing a deck that doesn't want to go uh, to a certain point in the game that doesn't want to get into extra resources and the second thing um, that is preventing this card from being uh, very good is the fact that uh, you also need to be running a lot of smuggle cards to make that to make this unit worth it. So there's simply just a lot of things that prevents me from being excited about this card. The 2-5 for 4 stat line for an aggro deck is not great. Yes, you get to deploy him early, but then the stat line is not very impressive. Sabine, for example, dealing 3 damage, far better. So it's obviously a card that I think is meant to be for, for an aggro deck, but I don't know in which cases I would want to play this card over like a Sabine. Um, and uh, the, the deck building constraint of having to play a bunch of smuggle cards in your deck is also pretty substantial. Um, finally, another thing that I don't like about this card is the fact that there's no combo potential with this card because it says use the ability only once each round. At least if it didn't have this mention, you would think maybe this card has a combo potential of being able to kind of like play a bunch of smuggle cards and kind of all go out of control and do some sort of combo with that. But this, this limitation here prevents this ability. Another thing as well with that leader is that this leader, the ability does not get stronger uh, once the, the, the Lando is deployed. The, the ability is pretty much always the same. So I'm very sceptical uh, toward this card. I don't think, I think it's unlikely to be uh, really that good, but I could be wrong. Right now, I read this as my first impression is a 3 out of 10. Next, we got the Millennium Falcon. So basically this card has two ways of being played, either you play it from your hand and then it's a 5-5 ambush or you're playing it as a smuggle and then it's just a 5-5. So as a 5-5 ambush for 6, I don't think it's particularly exciting, it doesn't kill a fire spray unless you're once again playing a Boba Daimyo. Uh, but then it has to trade with it, that means you spend 6 resources to kill a 5 resource unit, uh, you basically spend 6 resources to deal a 6 resource unit, that's not um, necessarily amazing. Um, it's okay, I guess, but it's not amazing. As a smuggle, 6 for 5-5 five, five is pretty under underwhelming as well. So I think either way, it's not really great. The flexibility is nice, I guess, but I'm not particularly excited about this card. I don't really see a white deck would want to play that. Also, always keep in mind that since the card pool is going to double, uh, there's going to be a certain power creep to the game. And it's relatively, uh, uh, so it means that every card that we see have to be stronger than, uh, to see play, they, they, they're going to be competing in a tougher environment than the card that we saw from Spark of Rebellion. So that's always have to be taken into account when you evaluate the card as well. So right now I'm rating this card at a 3 out of 10, I don't think it's very good. Then we got Smuggler Hades. Uh, Smuggler Aid. So basically this card is sort of a repair uh, that can be smuggled. I think this card is pretty good. Uh, it cannot uh, repair unit unlike uh, repair, uh, but uh, honestly, you use it on the base 90% of the case anyway. Uh, the fact that it is uh, open to any heroic deck, as opposed to be locked behind the blue, is very important because it means that certain decks, which normally would not have access to reliable healing, now have access to it. So that by itself makes the card very playable. And uh, in, a, in, a, in, a, in some different decks, I think it would have been even better as a villainy card, even though that wouldn't be thematically fitting. Uh, it would have been even better in a, in a villainy deck. Uh, sorry, in a villainy um, uh, in a villainy uh, um, colors, because really some villainy are desperate for healing. Uh, and then icing on the cake, it is also smuggle, which means that it's a kind of card you can resource early, and then you can pay three for it to put yourself out of range of four cards. I believe in the literacy of the game. I think that's really good. So I like this card. It's not. It's mostly going to be a sideboard card, but I think it's really good. I rate this card a 6 out of 10. Uh, moving on, we got the Client. Uh, so the Client is um, uh, a card that I found to be absolutely incredible. First of all, 2-5 shield for 3 is very respectable by itself. Yes, it doesn't really kill much of anything and doesn't put a lot of pressure on the base, but it is a body that is very, very tough to destroy for such a cheap cost and obviously combined with a very powerful ability and you have the cocktail for an excellent card 
Uh, the ability basically says that you can basically give bounty to a unit and then if that unit gets killed you get to repair your base by five. This, this, that ability is incredibly powerful because what it does is that it makes it so every time you kill a unit you're going to be able to heal five which is insane uh, to say the least. So basically we have a card that has a tremendously huge impact on the game if it stays alive and that is at the same time extremely difficult to get rid of. So uh, that is just excellent. So of course the, the, the downside is that you have to spend an action to make that happen. So if your opponent, let's say you were in a scenario where uh, you do have the initiative, uh, you're going to have to use that ability first on the unit to give it bounty and then use a removal to kill that unit and get, get to heal your base 5. And that unit, by attacking you, by giving that opportunity for this unit to attack you, uh, you might take more damage than 5 and in which case that ability is not going to be worth it. With that being said, there is not that many units in the game that, that attacks for more than 5, in which case you can decide to just ignore the ability and just play the removal right away. Obviously there's going to be plenty of cases where you're not going to have the initiative, in which case the, the unit has already attacked, so then you can use the client, play, use the removal, kill the unit, heal your, your base 5. Uh, and there's also going to be cases where uh, your opponent is simply just doesn't have any unit on the board and just playing a new unit on the board, you give it bounty and then you kill the unit right away and you heal five. So this is just there's just too many cases where this card is going to heal you a bunch of damage. Uh, once again, just like even if you use the ability once, like simply heal five, a two five shielded unit that healed you five, that is just by itself is absolutely incredibly powerful. And in my, in my opinion, it's going to get played way more than once. It's exactly the kind of card that Control Dex wants to have. Uh, it makes it very difficult for aggro to, to, to deal you enough damage before things come online. I think the card is incredibly powerful. I think it's um, it also has two very relevant traits. It is Imperial and Official, two extremely relevant traits. Uh, yeah, it, this card is very unbelievably powerful, and I think it's going to be strong against aggro, but it's also going to be strong against midrange decks, and it's also going to be strong against control, because against control, it's a 2-5 shielded unit, so it's going to be a tough cookie to crack, and it's going to keep attacking you every once in a while. So even against control, it's not, obviously it's far less powerful against control decks, but even against control, it's not a useless card by any means. So I think this card is absolutely incredible, and in my opinion, it is the best card we've seen, uh, from uh, it's the best card we've seen uh, from Shadow of the Galaxy so far, and I rate this card a 10 out of 10. It is the it is the first card that I'm rating a 10 out of 10. I think this card is incredible, uh, and it also helps existing archetype. Also, I didn't mention, but it it is creates synergy in bounty decks. If you're going to be running a bounty deck, the ability to have a a, a, um, a permanent source of giving bounties to stuff, I think it's just this by itself is 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 incredibly powerful. Uh, there's just so much going on with this card. It's just it's just gonna see play in a lot of decks. It's very very powerful. Uh, last but not least, we got Kuehl, uh which is a two three for two. So restore one. So already this by itself is basically Arc 170 territory. Um, Arc 170, of course, being a space unit, is gonna be slightly better. Uh, but the uh, on attack ability is also very strong. You basically discard a card from your deck if it shares an aspect of your base. You return to your hand. So basically. It's almost a guaranteed draw. Like it's not not guaranteed. It's like it depends on 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 your on how you build your deck, I guess. But it, it is very likely to, to draw your card. I think it's depending on how your deck is built is basically between 66 to 100 percent chance of drawing your card, or very close to 100 percent if you're running a mono mono color deck. So I think this card is just has too much text on it to, to for, for it to be bad. The two three start line is a little bit awkward against uh, all the three three that we are seeing against the Sabine, against the Battlefield Marine, and stuff like this, but not every deck play those cards, and uh, in, and if they don't, then the card is just a very solid... By the way, being a 2-3-4-3 three, three is not great stat line, but they, we've seen plenty of 2-3-4-2 two, two in Spark of Rebellion that an, uh, ended up sen seeing a lot of play, uh, mostly thinking about, like, uh, for example, like, uh, Season Short Trooper, obviously Sabine, uh, obviously uh, the... Um, uh, we got Admiral Ozzel, we'll see all the Space Unit, Arc-170, the X-Wing, despite matching up very poorly versus A-Wing, we'll see play, uh, we'll see still see a lot of 2 3 for 2 ended up seeing play. So, 2 3 for 2 on the ground is not great, but it's not, but I think the card is strong enough 
that it is uh, fairly compensate that that weakness. And I think that against anything that doesn't play those three three for two, the card is going to be really strong because once again two three for two that almost guarantee draws your card and that uh, uh, effect is repeatable. You can uh, repeat that effect over and over again and draw a bunch of cards. It's one of the cheapest way. You, it's a very low commitment way to draw card to have some 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 from, some card draw in your deck. So it's it's really really good. So I rated this card a eight out eight out of ten. And that's it. That's basically it for all the spoilers. So uh, I feel like uh, specifically in this episode, I had a lot of very powerful cards. So I'm really excited to see how it's going to imp be impacting the meta. And there's tons of decks that I already kind of want to build. And maybe I will, I will release some deck tech videos uh, before the release of the game with some of the decks that I've built uh, for Shadows of the Galaxy. Uh, anyway, thank you so much for following that video and see you next time.